and welcome back. For those of you that have watched other videos in the various uh, lessons and modules I record, you will notice everything looks a little bit different. That's because I've just upgraded my desk from the old smaller desk I had to this much bigger one, which has got much more space for these various devices. I've also replaced my uh, trusty old... Can I even do that if I move? Unfortunately, this webcam is fixed, but look, I've now got... Ooh, a big, much sexier 37-inch um, curved monitor for my main screen. So this screencast should look very different. Um, hopefully everything else looks okay, though. But once again, I digress. So what I'm talking about is how to install IBM I ACS. I realized the various articles that I had on the website talking about how to download it and uh, what it does. I didn't explain the two simple ways of installing Access Client Solutions, the screen emulator for IBM I and older AS400 and I series machines. Um, quite simply, you can download it and install it. It runs through a Windows installer which puts all the shortcuts in place and adds all the menu options within Windows, or you can just download it, unzip it, and store it somewhere. Uh, this is called a standalone install. Some people also call it a thumb drive or a USB install because they literally carry it around on a thumb drive, plug it in, run it. It's just the main file that runs is uh, a Java executable. So as long as you have Java installed on your machine, you can run ACS. So here's an example. I've just realized that um, there's a new version of ACS that's come out, 1.187, and I'm on 1.186. One of the nice things about the standalone install is you can just download the new files, replacing the ones you already have on, and boom, you're running the 187 version. So here we go. Let's have a look at how I run it on my machine. First of all, on my desktop, my desktop is synchronized with OneDrive, Microsoft OneDrive. You'll notice that I have a folder called IBM I Access version 1.1, and in here, these are all of my executables for IBM I ACS. Ignoring all of this stuff, because some of these are the installers and the start programmers and the documentation, all you care about is this cunningly titled icon called acsbundle.jar. It's a Java executable. So as long as you have Java installed on your machine, or one of the uh, open Java alternatives. I run Adopt Open JDK. I'll have a link to that blog article below. When you click on this ACS bundle, it says, how do you want to run it? Because it's the first time I'm doing it. When I run it, here we are. This is IBM I Access Client Solutions running. All of the configurations are the same. It knows the machines that I work with, and I can run the emulator, data transfers. I can access the IFS and everything else. Really simple. Click it, click emulator. You can then save shortcuts to your desktops if you just want to go straight into the emulator as well. Very super easy to use. And the nice thing is, here's my installed version, which happens to be 1.186. I've just gone in and downloaded the new version, 1.187. If I simply unzip that download file, so here I'm in my downloads folder. Here's all the files I've just downloaded. Look, they're all dated, right? So if I pick all of those up, cut them, go back to my desktop into my folder repository, select them all, and just paste the new ones in. It says, oh, hang on, you're about to replace everything in those folders, and I say, yes, please. So all this is gonna do is replace all of the files that I had there with the latest and greatest version. If I now run this ACS bundle program, do, 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 do. looks the same, right? Wouldn't expect any major differences. But if I now do a help about, here I am running version 1.187, the latest version. So I've got all those new little fixes wrapped in. It's retained all of my system um, information that I had there anyway. And likewise, I could start an emulator screen if I wanted to sign on to one of these machines in particular. Cannot remember what my password is for Pub400. Why don't I look on my little scribble pad and say, maybe it's this. So here's the 5250 emulator. Here I am, signed onto the machine. As simple as that. Of course, you can go in and you can play with the various setups in here, like the screens, the fonts, and all that stuff. I'm sure I've mentioned them all in different lessons down below this post. So that's my first way of doing it, which is to download the product and use it as a standalone. So I'm going to stop this video now and do a separate one where I'll go through the actual install. 
right. I'll see you in a minute.